Hi, this is Phil, and I'm here to tell you all about the Capes and Lunatics Patreon. Don't miss out on our comic book creator interviews, including our monthly Chichester chats with comic book legend D.D. Chichester, superhero movie brackets, and our search for the worst comic book movie of all time, and many, many more specials, all completely uncensored. Access starts for $3 a month, full video when you pledge $5 a month. Check out the link in our show notes or go to patreon.com slash capesandlunatics. Hope to see you there. This is Luca Parrish, and you're listening to the Capes and Lunatics podcast. Uh-huh. Recording has started. In a world of capes and lunatics, gods and monsters, there comes a day where a threat will arise that no one hero can face alone. In that time, will rise a team. Avengers. This is Avengers Declassified. I'm your host, Charlie, the Professor Esser, and with me, as always, is the Blue-Eyed Bomber from the Burger Pits. Phil Podcast Parrish. Hey, Philip Podcast Parrish. So good to have you. Um, uh, tonight's episode, we are discussing all new, all different Avengers 1 through 3, which are the three issues, not the zero issue, or the free comic book day issue, (laughs) but the three issues that define the start of this run of heroes. And this is a very interesting, this was part of the all new, all different line of Marvel. A lot of things had been rebranded at this time. Uh, This was when they sort of introduced a bunch of legacy characters. Um, one imagine this is what Gen was it Gen Five was supposed to be for DC, but like twenty years later, um, we're basically this is where Ms. Marvel gets introduced, and uh, you have um, uh, Sam as the Nova, and of course Viv Vision uh, will eventually uh, become involved in some way. Well, although not here. She shows up in the Champions later. But um, uh, we have Miles as the mm-hmm. third teen, and then you have the adults in the team, which include Vision and Lady Thor. And, of course, the one true Captain America, Phil, Uncle Sam Wilson. Did you say Tony Stark? Uh, Tony Stark shows up, but he's not really in the team. That's... <laughs> That's the moral of this story, is Tony Stark uh, is no longer running the Avengers. And that's that's where we're opening, is there are no Avengers. We have sold Avengers Tower to, uh, according to this, some gentleman by the name of Kang. He wants all of Tony Stark's stuff out of there. Gee, why does that name sound familiar? Actually, we call him Griffin. Uh, Mr. Griffin, although his company is called Q-E-N-G. King. King. Industries, so you know that's a thing. Um, <laughs> but yes, Mr. Griffin does not like Tony Stark, but he's and he seems to be a very powerful person. Uh, and recently in the comic book Nova, he fought a Chitari bad guy named Warbringer and threw him into the sun. But of course, just like yellow beards, Chitari are never more dangerous than when they're dead. Um, no. He, he he teleports in, but and I do love this because this is a very interesting take on transporter logic because he literally is being, he is literally just data being beamed across the universe and then reformed effectively as a like they're not, they're not even pretending that's what they do that yep that's absolutely what we do and the idea is like that's so much more efficient this whole co-locating of your atoms across that's Kane calls it out as like that once people get over their foolish uh senses of morality they'll, they'll find that this is a much more efficient way to travel <laughs> yes i'm not sure that worked out very well for him but no uh, that is our Warbringer. He shows up here. He shows up here. And he is ready for battle. Although Kang, I'm uh, sorry, Mr. Griffin, I'm sort of spoiling everything, Phil. That's all right. Uh, 
this comic book that came out years ago. I'm spoiling big secrets. And uh, again, that's what we're doing the rest of the month is uh, all new, all different. So, I mean, mm -hmm. no, we're going to get to a lot of this. So We're going to see this arc play out. But right now, it's all a mystery. Bum, bum, bum. And it's uh, meant to be this thing where we're going to be showing our legacy line heroes of uh, Vision, Captain America, mm -hmm. Iron Man, uh, Thor. But of course, it's new. All it's all new, all different Thor, and all new, all different Captain America, uh, along with um, Miles Morales. Yeah, the teenagers. Who comes yeah. In here. And then we also meet in a different part of the story, um, Ms. Marvel, Kamala Khan, who mm -hmm. has a TV show coming out uh, next week. That's right. Oh no, uh, I think no, in two weeks, I think. And then they is it uh, June third? I thought. Uh, or, okay, oh no, was, I thought it was like the eighth or something. But let me go. Or, was it June first? Because that's the Wednesday, I think. So. Uh, I'm okay. not sure. Anyway. Yeah, I'll look it up. We'll figure it out. But anyway, so Ms. Marvel's coming uh, coming out um, <laughs> very soon. And uh, she's in this. Uh, no, Sam, Sam, uh, I forget Sam's last name, but Sam is in it. The, the, oh, the Alexander, Sam Alexander. Sam, Sam yeah. Alexander. There we go. Uh, and of course, Miles Morales. Uh, Miles sort of investigates. Uh, when Warbringer shows up and uses his stealth to just sort of like sneak into uh, what was formerly Avengers Tower and sort of, and then of course uh, Mr. Griffin notices that someone is there. Um, although I did like that just before this, again this is this thing where when um, when uh, Warbringer shoots the energy beam at, uh, at Mr. Griffin he just sort of does this and it does that little uh, apocalypse thing where the Z ZV moves around people and just yeah, exactly yeah. It. Except he's doing that to it because he's because he's Kang and he's awesome like that. I'm sorry, dang it, spoilers. He's Mr. Griffin and his company is Kang, but with spelled with a Q, so it's not anything you think it might be. Okay, kids, don't get ahead of yourselves. Even the even though there was that building in. Loki, that said QENG. Um, that was Avengers Tower, and gee, what was that all about? But uh, so yeah, so Miss Marvel, the first episode will be June eighth. Oh wow, okay. So which which I thought, which I thought maybe they dropped Kenobi this week, you know, on a Friday because maybe they were, you know, so they'd have a show Wednesdays and Fridays. No, starting next week, Kenobi's going the Wednesdays. So at least for a little while, we're gonna have Kenobi and Miss Marvel at the same time on the same day. Okay. Well, maybe that's also why they did two Kenobis up front. Oh, maybe. So that we're already into our third Kenobi. But at least halfway we're through. Already, we're yeah. already into our fourth Kenobi by the time the first Ms. Marvel comes out. Mm -hmm. And you just got two more Kenobis. And then, you know, then, so you just have that, you just have like three weeks of overlap, you know? Yeah. Uh, although Boys comes out uh, the third, so that's also a thing to watch. <laughs> mm-hmm. Uh, it gets crazy, Phil. Uh, moving right along. Um, uh, the the fight breaks out. Uh, mean, and actually, kind of getting ahead of ourselves here because what it actually opens up with is Sam. Uh, oh, two Sams. Uh, <laughs> Sam Wilson saving people. Um, on that bridge. On that bridge. And Tony Stark just sort of getting stuck in traffic. And then when everyone starts saying, we want to see you, and then it's like, oh, well, wouldn't you like to see Tony Stark too? And brings him in, and it's very embarrassing for everyone. Um, and that's fun. Uh, but then they all meet up with when the explosions start. Uh, uh, Tony Stark transforms his car into an Iron Man suit, which is pretty awesome. Uh, they go to fight... Uh, fight Warbringer, but as it turns out, he's actually super, super powerful and just hits him with a laser blast. Everyone's knocked down at the end, Phil. Yes. That's so sad. Um, I can't imagine that all of our heroes are dead, but clearly they all must be, as you do at the end of any cliffhanger ending. And then we get a little Coda 
a little a little side story here, a little backup story. We get to see the awkward meet cute of um, Nova and Ms. Marvel. And it's weird because it kind of feels like they're, they're they're heavy shipping them. Although maybe it's just because I'm an old person and I think, oh, they immediately hit each other. That means they're in love. Because <laughs> that's what the romantic comedies of the 80s taught us. We had very bad role models. Um, yeah, and of course, it's, it's, it's the situation where... Um, what is this? This is the giant dog, right? This is the giant animal he has tracked here because a villain has in in something from the microverse. By the way, I love that she is still in beginning here, where it is literally a growth power. It's yeah. not a stretch; it's a growth. And she even makes comment: "I'm going to shrink down to the size of a pin and punch him in the eardrum." So I really like that they're. Leaning heavy into what Ms. Marvel's power set is as far as controlling that mass proportions. And I always really wanted to see her one day travel to the microverse. Because I thought that would be awesome. To yeah. really have her push her powers to the out outmost limit limits, you know. Be very cool that they ever team her with Hank Penn or uh Scott Lang to see exactly what we can do with these powers. So that's my pitch to you, Marvel. You got it. Uh, meanwhile, back in this story, uh, Sam is, you know, very awkward around Kamala, and Kamala's very awkward around him, and, you know, and they both are regretting everything they're saying, but they're doing these things. Uh, Sam basically breaks a lot of stuff, uh, and Kamala's like, do not come into my city and break a bunch of stuff. That's not cool, dude. Um... And then he figures, I got to do something. I got to make it right. And he, like, immediately takes out of the, off his mask and says, hi, I'm S Let's start over. Hi, I'm Sam. And this is apparently the superhero equivalent of sending someone a dick pic. Um, oh. Because it's, it's this big thing. It's like, I'm going to do this. And uh, now we can trust each other and be super friends, right? And it's like, no, I am not ready for this level of relationship yet, dude. I just met you, and I didn't like you that much the first time. <laughs> and then he totally, like, blows it off and says, I was just lying. That's not even my name. You know? <laughs> it's like, it is, it is, they are very, very bad at their jobs. I think we can all agree to that. Uh, <laughs> And it's 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 weird uh, they're, that they're, they're awkward, awkward teenagers. They're awkward yeah. teenagers. Yeah, I mean that is really what it is. It's like, and this is I think supposed to be a theme of this book is that these are three hot young heroes learning the ropes of being heroes, uh, with some more established heroes to guide them, but also heroes that are filling into legacy roles as well, with the exception of Vish. So that is, which is an interesting aspect of it too, which um, uh, we'll get to in a minute because we do have uh, issue two, which uh, has Nova, which of course has um, after basically Warbringer is left. He's gone. He's done. Uh, he doesn't kill everyone, which is weird because he, Kind of probably really could have, could have easily just totally killed everyone, but you know, in classic supervision fashion, supervillain fashion, he doesn't want to just kill them oh, when no. he has an important mission to run and get all these great toys, you know, um, as you do, Phil. And of course, uh, uh, in doing so, he of course uh, attacks uh, Jersey City Science Center. And as soon as he gets there, Noah's like, oh, no, not Jersey City. That's her territory. Oh, boy. That's trouble. Meanwhile, uh, the Vision uh, shows up. He's like, hello, fellow heroes. Are you adventuring? I was just happening by. Uh, let, me, let me disassemble your uh, melded armor, Tony Stark. And then says, "Well, you, you know," and even says, "Well, Tony, you can't pursue him uh, on uh, 
that armor. He's like, yeah, don't worry. That was just a that was just my disposable armor. Um, that was my car armor. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> so he calls the he calls the regular suit in. Calls a regular suit from from headquarters. So you know he gets that on, and he's he's looking pretty fly. And they go after Warbringer. Meanwhile, Warbringer is fighting. Um, uh, Sam and Ms. Marvel, who are again still not having a good time. Very bad rapport, these two. Uh, <laughs> and uh, I'm trying to think. They, they, he eventually, they eventually get in each other's way. Uh, they wind up having to save a bunch of civilians, obviously. Um, and that's how he gets away, because that's that's how you get away as a supervillain. You just endanger civilians. But even during that, you know, Sam is just smashing stuff. You know, because he thinks that'll solve the problem, but it's like, you know, she's like, people live here, you idiot. You know, someone owned that building, that's their livelihood, you know. And really, just talking about the stuff that no one ever talks to the Hulk about, you know. It's like, Hulk, you know when you smash things, you're actually smashing people's dreams. And, you know, and Hulk's like, but Hulk's sad. Um, (laughs) uh, But anyway, in this moment, uh, they meet up with the rest of the heroes. They track uh, our villain to uh, the Grove Street Station, uh, which is never drawn to look anything like the Grove Street Station. It's a lovely station, don't get me wrong, but um, yeah, they I don't I don't think the person who draws Grove Street Station has ever been to Grove Street Station in Jersey City. Um, Grove Street Station isn't even underwater. Just as a, as a point of obvi- obvious point, it's actually further inland. You got to go. It's not even the first one underneath the water. You go to Exchange Street next, and then you go under the Hudson River. Um, you know, so really, if they'd met at Exchange Place, that would have been much more realistic for when they get under the water and they blow a hole in this. Well, actually, of course, what happens is um, Lady Thor, or sorry, Mighty Thor shows up. She throws her hammer. And who is this Mighty Thor, uh, Phil? This is one of the great mysteries. No one knows who this lady is. Um, Uh, Although we'll find out next issue, she apparently knows CPR. It's like, hey, man, people join in Asgard, too. Because I think Vision says that's an odd talent for an Asgardian goddess. (laughs) What's up with this Vision? Um, But there is precedent for Thor's knowing knowing medical uh, techniques. Well, you know, and they used to actually do that with Thor, where Thor would actually reference his knowledge as Don Blake. Oh, yeah. They don't do that anymore, and I don't know why. You know? I mean, did he it's lose weird, all those memories would... over time, or what? I don't know. I guess as he's become more Thor, being Don Blake, he sort of purged himself of the Don Blake persona, which I think is where we get all these problems. I think it was better when Don Blake was a transformation. Mm-hmm. More than a, uh, a separate, separate being, you yeah. know. I think that 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 makes it a little weirder, and that's what leads to all the problems that they always have with Don Blake coming back and causing trouble and killing people because he's just a shadow and a wraith. And you know, really, they should have him do a whole thing like Banner and Hulk does all the time, and just like sort of sit down and have a cup of coffee and work out who, what the heck are we, man? Exactly. You know, maybe even making the point to good old Don Blake. Well, you know, technically, you know, I'm not real either. I'm a god, and I am very much influenced by the beliefs of others, you know, and you could actually get a whole thing. And really, let's face it, I mean, at some point, Lady Thor and Jane Foster probably have this same dichotomy. Oops, I oh. revealed the secret. Damn, I'm so bad at these, 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 these uh, spoilers. Although, I guess... Everyone who's seen the Thor... I was going to say, Thor with the Thor. trailers out now, I think everybody knows Yeah, now. people will know that's the mystery. Who is this mystery woman? It is Dr. Jane Foster. Um, they uh, they eventually do catch up with, um, with uh, Warbringer. He is going to assemble the, the device, but even having the things in the same... It opens up the gateway window that you can look into, and you see all of these uh, Chitauri warriors, and the guy's like, but I don't recognize any of those uniforms. Where are these people? And 
And Griffin, uh, Griffin says, don't worry about that. You just got to open, you got to put them together, and then you can, they'll all come rolling through. But before you do that, let's figure out our strategy, because I think they're going to be a little hard for you to control when they first show up. Um, and uh, then, of course, they all get together. They have a, they have their typical fight that you do. Um, Warbringer is showing himself a, a, a Thor-level threat, which is really impressive. Um, and they realize that what, then they get the plan. The plan is they're going to assemble the things because they realize that's what's going to open the gate. They're going to assemble the things. It's going to open the gate. And, but then they're going to destroy the things. And hopefully that closes the gate. You know, I mean, there's a lot of presumptions that are made by Tony Stark in this moment. Um, but he wouldn't be Tony Stark if he didn't make presumptions, Phil. I mean, that whole thing is weird, too, because uh, he wants to reform the Avengers. I mean, that's at the end, but it's... Yeah. I mean, do you think... I don't know. Again, I know we want to push books, but he's like, oh, Cap's doing, like, the whole Unity Squad. He's like, and there's another team. He's like, no one's doing classic Avengers, you know? Let's, let's yeah. do classic Avengers. Classic Avengers, yeah. Um, which, you know, that's good. And, hey, he's got a Thor. He's, he's got his Thor. He's got his Cap. Yep. And we've got just a couple other people. Why not? A Nova and a Ms. Marvel, and you know, and it's good that we get the kids there because there is this whole thing. There's actually even a great line in this. A few, a few bits later, when when the heroes want to ditch the kids, and they make the point that you know, uh, heroes don't get their or like adults don't get their way just by yelling. And Vision says, "Actually, my experience has not been that." Um, <laughs> Which is funny because it's true, you know. It's like you these heroes they often yell to get their way, um, especially Captain America and Tony Stark. Let's be honest. But um, you also get the idea that the the young people want to step up and want to be the heroes that they have envisioned themselves to be their whole lives, you know, or that they've always dreamed of being, um, or even if they didn't dream of being eventually have become, and they feel that great weight of power and responsibility. Um, at the end of this, you know, they, you know, people were like, yeah, you know, and again, one of these other things is like, how did Warbringer know your name, um, uh, Nova? And, you know, the vision covers for him and says, oh, well, a being like Warbringer, Warbringer would certainly have run into the Nova Corps over the years. So that's how he just recognized who Nova was because he's wearing a Nova Corps uniform. Obviously. It's really, it's not weird unless you realize that, you know, he's just calling him by his uniform, not his hero handle. You see, and Ooh. as they're flying away, Vision says, now just remember, you owe me. And this is our hint that something's not right with Vision. Hmm. I wonder what it could be. Um, I'm sure we'll find out eventually, Phil. Oh, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. I mean, that's the first three issues. You don't want to get into issue four yet. Not only because uh, that'll be a spoiler for next episode, but I haven't read it yet. Um, <laughs> I know. I haven't reread it yet either. Yes. Uh, yeah, and of course, I did read all of these when they first came out, and they were. Oh yeah, I think we. I think we might have talked them real briefly when they first came out. Yeah, this was what, like 2015. Yeah, I'm trying to remember like what. I'm trying to remember. Was this right after Secret Wars? You know what? Because I'm trying. I'm trying to. It's weird because. Yeah, this was after Secret Wars. This was part of. That's what made it all new and all different. That's why Miles is in this universe. Yeah. 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 But I'm trying to remember because I, when it gets disrupted, I'm trying to think if that's because of the the Secret Empire storyline or if it was the Age of Ultron storyline uh, that disrupts it. Because I'm trying well, to remember. We if, do, well, remember we do Pleasant Hill where we like you know age oh, cap yeah. back up, back back down. Yeah, yeah, but that's also what leads to Secret, Secret Empire. Empire yeah. So yeah. Uh, and I don't, I don't remember the timelines. It all tends to blur together. That's what's crazy about it, Philip. Uh, okay, at least, yeah, the first three issues were like January, February, March 2016. So, yeah, 
When did Secret Empire start? Uh, um, well, this was 2017. So yeah, so 2016 this... was the was these for was these three issues. Oh, it has God. to be at, Secret Empire has to be after because Pleasant Hill's coming up in a in a few issues, and that's when he gets aged up. And you remember the Cosmic Cube yeah, ages yeah, yeah, him yeah. up, and that's what, oh, so that's, the, what, the, the, that's, the, the, that's what starts Hydra Cap. Yeah, yeah. So there are solicitations for Pleasant Hill in this. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I don't get the ads, so. <laughs> Um, but that's, well, so that's cool, man. That's, so that tells us where it's at. So, yeah. So that's what eventually destroys this unity squad. Um, uh, it's crazy, man. Um, you know, and then you also had, was, was this, did, was Luke Cage's Avengers at this time? We, we, uh, he had Blue Marvel and Photon and, uh, uh, Blade in it. That might have been a little before this, because wasn't Otto on their team? Yeah, Otto was on their team briefly, and then and then with Spider-Man. It's like, no, Otto took over my brain. As you do. Anyway, it's crazy, Philip, but you know, the Marvel Universe is crazy. Um, and we got some comic books to talk about tonight. Yes. Uh, so, since this is the Avengers Declassified podcast, let's talk about the Avengers book. Avengers... 56. Yes. Um, where good old good old Jane Foster plain simple Jane Foster seeing horse calling out to her um, trying to remember who she is but then she remembers she's Mrs. Thor Odin's son. Mm -hmm. The Man, the woman of the woman he loves. But what's this? She lives in Asgard in a quaint little cottage as a happy housewife. That's what she's always dreamed of. Wait, was it? Oh. She also takes care of some suspiciously ominous looking pigs, Phil. Yep. Can't imagine anything bad's going to come from these pigs. They seem just nice and friendly, but not also. Um, she keeps on dreaming of having the wings and whatnot. And her husband says, oh, you are enough of an angel. You know, he loves her. He comes back and he's having his beer and they're having a good old time. Uh, and she is tempted by the hammer. She wants to pick it up. And Thor's like, well, of course you can pick it up. Mjolnir knows you very well. And she's like, no, this isn't Mjolnir. And you're not Thor. And he's like, dang. I was actually hoping I was Thor. Because I really did love you. It's so sad. <laughs> Poor putty Thor dies sad. And then we find out that it's time for the pigs to play. And they're just more Mephistos. Because you can never have too many Mephistos, so. That's right. And we got a little piggy Mephisto, and a Norse Mephisto, and a big fat guy Mephisto. Because <laughs> sure, why not? You know? I wonder if the pig Mephisto is, like, from the the Larval universe where Peter Porker is from. Oh, maybe. Like, he's, like, maybe he's pig Fisto there, you know? Um... <laughs> But then a Jane Foster from another universe shows up. Yep. Because it's all these multiversal Avengers. Because all the multiverses are going mad, Phil. Yep. And they get into their they they beat up the the devils because the devils aren't that hard to beat because they're just devils and they're two BA Norse goddess level power people. And they fight and they get through and. Uh, that all happens, and then they most part their ways, and they return to their perspective universes as Robbie Reyes gathers together Avengers from all the dimensions because they know they're going to have to fight both the Masters and the Parliament of Red. And there's this whole thing, the mind thought of uh, good old Jane Foster. It's like, man, they must have had some outdated intel on me because who would have thought it would have been a temptation for me to just want to be a happy homemaker? But then she's just like, but wait, what if it was that wasn't what they were tempting me with? Maybe what they were tempting me with was Mayolner. Mm -hmm. 
Because they're so in division between the Avengers, you see. <coughs> Sorry, she that, wants her power back. <laughs> and I love I love that meeting she's at with the Avengers and Tony Stark. Oh yeah, Mephisto tried to cover up me too. Yeah, man. Yeah. Drop me in a cave in the Ice Age, man. I build us armor out of ice because that's what I do. Because I'm all that. Yeah, you know, Tony, he's, he's got to make it about himself. I know. That's what our government does. Um... <laughs> Do you have another book you want to toss out there, Phil? Um, I know you probably stopped reading it, but Hulk 7, Banner of uh, War, continued. Yeah. I, you know, I just, and it's fine. It's fine if people are enjoying it. You know, I just, and I saw someone make a point. Like, you know, after the Green Door st- stuff, mm-hmm. it all seems just a little bit, you know, not quite yeah. the same level. Yeah. Does, doesn't mean it's bad. Doesn't mean it's wrong. It's just like, it's not the same level. But, uh, yeah, so tell me about it, Phil. How's the Hulk doing? And is he still fighting Thor? Well, yes. Uh, if you remember, at the end of uh, the, the Thor issue, Tony Stark showed up in celestial armor. So uh, the, Hulk, the Hulk makes quick work of him. Uh, and then Thor tries to intercede. And Odin, uh, they mm-hmm. put the hammer on, try to hold Hulk down again. Then meanwhile, then Hulk's shooting like lasers out of his eyes and stuff and they're like what's going on uh and he mm. that's when hulk basically detonates with the uh how many gamma bombs did they say it was like the force of like uh three thousand gamma bombs oh boy but tony <laughs> but tony survives to see yes three thousand the effects of three thousand gamma bombs had an effect on thor oh yeah hulk them out <laughs> hulk them out yeah so of course, now, of course did, you, did they tap with the fact? Because I know that in the end of Thor, they said, "No, you don't understand. He doesn't know it's a simulation." Oh yeah, they kind of threw that line out again too. It's like he doesn't know he's in a simulation. It doesn't know he's not in a simulation. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that. I mean, that sounds cool. It's. It sounds like it's a good yeah. punch him up book. And I mean, if, if they ever explain what's going on, they still haven't explained. You know what happened in Santa Fe, and you know what drove Banner and the Hulk to this. So it's like once you get answers, maybe, but. Yeah, it's it's still kind of weird. Yeah, honestly, the entire I'm driving a rocket ship inside because I'm in my own mind castle. It's like, you know, I, I don't know, man. No VR is that good. It's like it, it's weird the way that they presented it, you know. And they kind of had it where that Betty Banner in his head was probably some malevolent entity, but we haven't even seen Benny Betty in a while lately. So I'm just like, what's going oh, on? Oh, maybe she's a Mephisto too. Oh, maybe. It's Mephisto's all the way down, Phil. Um, so it's not quite Avengers, but we'll call out Captain Carter because it does have a, a Tony Stark and a uh, Captain, well, a Captain Carter, um, and uh, Betsy Brodick, uh, and she does have like super cool psychic powers in this too. Cool. So she's about to get uh, jumped by some ne'er do wells. And, of course, after they got her down and they're about to kill her, you see the big purple butterfly wings come out. And then she beats them all up, as you do. Go, random stuff! Um, and then she realizes, uh, after they after they jump out the window, she picks up uh, one of the guns. She realizes they they were with Strike. Which is the sort of this is the shield organization that uh-huh. England has put, put up since Brexit. Um, so your call, of course, calls uh, uh, Captain Carter, who has a plan because she can't go to any of her safe houses. So they go to her friend uh, Lizzie, who not Lizzie uh, Harley, who has a podcast. So they go to her place and then. Uh, they're going to hack the uh, director's computer. Uh, Captain Carter goes in there. And then there's this whole thing, which is, it's it's fun. Because they're like, Captain Carter, go to meeting room C. And she goes in there. And then it's it's the elevator scene, but in a big room. Because um, he's like, before we begin, does anyone want to get off? And you get into the big fight, which is cool. And... You know, after this, they're 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 they have hacked the um, the director's computer, so they're going through all of his files, 
Um, we have, uh, this is where we see uh, Tony Stark. And I didn't notice this at first, but it's like, it's weird because it's like, you don't notice it at first, but it seems like he's actually like wearing, he, he's, well, here, I'll show you. It'll, you'll see it when when we open, when in a few minutes when he gets into the fight. Um, because when he shows up into a fight, literally there are rockets coming out of his feet and his hand opens up. So it's like he's a robot Tony Stark. So I guess his dad wanted to send so bad he made a real boy. Uh, and then we're going to see what the fight is. And it turns out the Prime Minister, uh, Harry... Has never been to the schools he says he has, but everyone remembers having been there. Uh, here we go. One hundred thousand pound reward for Captain. Co that does not seem that heavy of a reward for an enemy of the state, you know? Yeah. Especially if you're going to try and get people to turn on Captain Carter, who is like, you know, a freaking icon. So Ooh. that's weird to me. You have another book you want to throw out? Uh, no, I'm good. I thought you had another. Did you? I thought you said you. Well, had I do. Another. I have uh, Spider Man 2099 Exodus. Yeah, we can talk that. I got, I got that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's not technically Avengers, but it does yeah. have oh, it Winter Soldier 2099. Yes. Who I liked. And, uh, Crossbones. And I, I'll be, it's weird because he's like all cyborg now. And part of me is like wondering is he like supposed to be just Romlo? Just. Deathlocked or something like that. Maybe, yeah. They made him like Darth Vader or something. Yeah, yeah. And we get in Transversity, and I got to be honest, I am I am not up to date on my lore uh, within. That's like, that's like a new thing. They like they like kind of rebooted. They've been trying to reboot it over the last couple of years. There was a uh, Alpha issue that was pretty much like the start of this. So before that, yeah. Period. And and I get yeah, but like I know that like I know the new Ghost Rider. He like exists in cyberspace. Yeah. He's like a cyber ghost, which is cool. And I guess there's like this this dimensional pocket world that they're in between places. Um, meanwhile, we have, of course, our Winter Soldier, uh, who was the last of the Winter Soldiers because um, when they're because they basically created a superhuman army, but then someone decided, well, what if the superhuman army can't be controlled? It's like, well, then maybe we should just kill them all. That sounds like a plan. And of course, she's the last one, and she's been looking to get the information to kill this dude who was the head of it. But then he's like, Oh, but you see, I have information. You think that you were just a nobody that uh, would have, um, that you had no family, but actually, you have a whole thing, and I have that knowledge here, and I will only do it, give it to you if you do something for me. And she's like, Nah, that's that's cool, dude. And kills him. Um, punches him in the face, and he dead. And she steals his loot and goes and gets on the train using her his black card because that's how you know you're in Osborne's inner circle. Uh, Always awesome. And then on the train, and dang, this old Russian lady, she's gonna be somebody, man. You don't sit on a train and share bread with an old Russian lady. And not have it come back in some way or another, man. There's a, I don't know if she's good, if she's evil, if that's... I'm actually Alana Boliva. You did not know that, but that's who I used to be. Now they call me the Grey Widow. Um, uh, and this is where she has to fight Crossbones, because she goes on top of the train, because she's going to get out. Um, and Crossbones goes to... But her, oh, by the way, her secret superpower is she can make technology stop working. She's basically an anti, um, what do you call that? Tech, uh, techno something or other. I don't know. Uh, okay. <laughs> it, it's a word where you can control machines, but it's like psycho, psycho, psych, psionic control of machines. But she can like make machines break with her. That's her widow's song. Her whistle. <laughs> Anyway, uh, so she beats up Crossbones, rips off his arm, as you do. To be fair, he had ripped her arm off first. That's right. And now she's got a shiny new arm. 
So that's cool. She, of course, puts her fist through him again because that's her move. And then she gets to this celestial garden. She uses the pyramid. I, oh, man, did I have not finish this? I think I think my pages stuck together. Oh, wow, Phil. So what happens at the end of the book? Uh, let me pull this out. I mean... Wait, which page are you? Which page didn't you get? The last one or the last? Like the last one, I for some reason I thought that after she defeats Crossbones, for some reason I thought that was the end of the book. She tears off his arm and kills him because you see she's got like the robot arm, yeah, on the cover. And it's like, well, how did she get that robot arm? Well, now she, now we get the origin of that. Um, and I guess for some reason I thought that was the end of the book. I don't know. No, so she, then we like get to... gets, she like gets her memories back, and then I think that's that same old woman in her family she's sitting with at the end. So, oh, she... yeah, and then the very last page is her talking to Spider Man twenty ninety nine. So, okay, so she gets back with so so that old lady does come back. So she was somebody. Yeah. So that was her mom, I guess. Is that's I don't that's know. A... That's what they don't want to say. If it's just I don't know if it's supposed to be with some of her family members or if it's just oh I have my memories back so i'll just go hang out with the old lady i don't know well, something something next a strange god comes to town and his name is loki yes oh, I, that's 20, what I said. yay so you're, that yeah. sounds like fun hey it could just be loki <laughs> well that's what i mean yeah well that's loki 2099 it's yeah. loki it's unless yeah. it's like an offspring or something yeah no. You know, I, mean, could, I mean, he does have like kids that are immortal too. You know, like the one person who runs the uh, what's it, the the Parthenon or the Pantheon or. I mean, you could see like twenty ninety nine. You know, Loki's like, "Here's my son. You have to earn the name. <laughs> make yeah. make the name make me proud. Make your old man proud, kid." Exactly. Anyway, all right, Phil. I think that's everything that yeah. I had. Yeah, okay, well, this has been a great episode. Uh, do you want to tell people where they can find us and buy merch and give us money? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. If you guys ever want to contact us, uh, email us capesandlunatics at gmail.com or call the voicemail 614-382-2737. That's 614-38-CAPES. Yeah, while I'm here, let me pull up the schedule for next week. I'm pretty sure it's, uh, yeah, it's I think it's all new, all different Avengers 4 through 6. So. Yeah. Yeah, just the next three kids. So. Uh, yeah, four Let's through six. That's so. the homework. Yeah, so send us your thoughts on those. Uh, you can also, uh, yeah, follow Avengers Declassified on Facebook, on Twitter. Uh, I can find links to all the various social medias for all the shows we do. Uh, subscribe to the YouTube channel. You can watch everything in uh, crystal clear video. And subscribe to the Patreon where you'll get uh, early access to creator interviews. Mr. DG Chichester every month. And the superhero movie brackets. We will find the worst superhero movie of all time by the end of the year. So you want to listen to the individual battles and uh, hear the end. Uh, so subscribe to the Patreon and pick yourself up some yeah, Capes and Lunatics and Capes and Lunatics Sidekicks merch. Find it Where's all at aluminium. That's right. Find it all at Linktree, L A N K T R dot E E slash Capes and Lunatics. Thank you, Phil. And of course, if you want to write to me in that old fashioned email way, the way our mothers and fathers once did, do so at superconnectivityblog at gmail.com. That's superconnectivityblog, all one word, at gmail.com. And of course, follow me on the Twitter, which I am very rarely on because there's, not any, there's nothing left to live tweet, as Lilith uh, complained recently. At Charlie Esser, that's C H A R L I E. E-S-S-E-R. Look for the two E's in the middle. For what, Phil? For quality. Bing. Oh, well, thank you, Maz. I, I threw it to Phil, but Maz is the one who t picked it up. All right. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, you have just listened to Avengers Declassified. Please remove this podcast from your memory. Well, actually, no, you don't have to because it's declassified. So there you go. It's all, it's all public domain now. <laughs> it happened. No spoilers. Good night, everybody. It was Tony Stark. How secret could it have been? Exactly. Uh, I like Tony Stark in, in in the doses they have. I'm in, I'm intrigued by the Captain Carter version of Tony Stark because it's like no. is, it, is his body. It's like weird. 
<laughs> I mean, I'm, my hope is that he is like Pinocchio. It's like, my daddy wanted a real boy, but he couldn't have one, so he built one. Oh, jeez. Then he's like Astro Boy. Oh, did you see in the next couple of weeks we're getting the uh, Iron Man Hellcat annual coming here soon? Ooh, yay. I like Iron Man and Hellcat. I think those two crazy kids can make it work. Well, tune in and find out. Good night. Good night.